Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 22, Constant Rate Revisited. Okay, so in this lesson, there were a bunch of examples in the teacher edition that are not in the student edition. So I am just going to assume that your teacher, if they're using this um, Common Core curriculum, that they will give you those examples in class but I will work the exercise problems in the student edition only on this lesson. So here we go, classwork number one exercise says, Peter paints a wall at a constant rate of two square feet per minute. Two square feet, that's area. Per minute is time. Constant rate is C. So remember, C equals, or C equals the distance divided by time, or in this case, area divided by time. So it says, assume he paints an area Y in square feet after X minutes. Well, that'd be Y after time X. So my C is Y over X. So I'm gonna use that as, because that's what they asked us to use. Assume he paints an area Y in square feet after X minutes, express this situation as a linear equation in two variables. So we're gonna use the Y over X. And since we're do, using C equals A area over T, and they gave us the area, which is two square feet over time one minute, so it's two over one. So now if C equals Y over X and C equals two over one, then Y over X equals two over one by the transitive property. So we get this, two things equal to the same thing, they're equal to each other, Y over X equals two over one cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply y times 1, which is simply y, 1y or just y, and x times 2 is 2x. So there is my linear equation in terms of x and y with a constant rate of 2 square feet per minute. Now it says to sketch this graph of the linear equation. So we've learned what these equations mean. So we have y equals mx plus b where this is my slope, and slope is represented as rise over run, and here's my rise, and here's my run, and my B is my Y intercept. So if I don't have a plus anything, it's plus zero. So my B is zero, so that is the zero. And that makes sense in this situation. How, much, how many square feet do you paint in zero minutes? None, you don't pick the paintbrush up, okay? So it's zero. All right, so then I'm going to plug in a one, and then it says slope is two over one. So I go up two, careful with your unit measurement here, area in square feet is two, and this is going by ones in time. So careful with the what these units mean. Okay, so this is a an interval of a length two, and this is an interval of length one. So if I go up two, it means to go up to this square, and then over one is right here and then up two over one, and you just keep doing that, up two over one, then we finally get this linear equation. And if I graph that on a line, it will, and always use a ruler graphing. My students know that I do not want to see a sketch of a line and it's all squiggly and we don't do approximations. We have to attend to precision, that's SMP6. Okay, so there is my linear equation. I will not draw the arrow in the opposite direction because it doesn't make sense in this situation. I cannot paint negative square feet and there's no such thing as negative time. Okay, we cannot turn back time. All right, part C. Using the graph or the equation, determine the total area he paints after eight minutes, one and a half hours, and two hours. So I'm gonna show you on the graph first. So here's the graph, and we're going to do, let me write these down, and I'll do it in different colors. Eight minutes, okay, um, one and a half hours. So it says using the graph or the equation. Well, I'll write these down, but we'll see what happens there. One and a half hours, okay, so then we're going to do one and one half hours. Well, that equals 60 minutes, and that's 30, so that's 90 minutes. And then I will do another one, and it said what? Was it two hours? Yes, two hours. Two hours, which is 60 times 2, or 120 minutes. 
Okay, now they say to use the graph. Well, I can do the 8 because the time in minutes is here. And, well, hello, 8 is here. Uh, 90 is somewhere off the screen over here. So I obviously can't use the graph to answer the other two. But I can do the 8-minute one on the graph. So here's what we would do. We go over to time minutes 8. And we go up until we get to that point right there. And if I go over here, that will tell us how many square feet. So the answer is 16 square feet in 8 minutes. And that's how we read a graph. But I can't do these other two because it's way, way, way off the screen. So my equation was y equals 2x. So I'm going to use that instead. I've already done the 8 minutes one. We got the answer to be 16. So if x is 1 and 1 half, that's 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3 halves. I don't like mixed fractions when we're doing this. So obviously this is going to cancel. Using the graph, determine the total area he paints after 8 minutes. So if he, that's 2 and a half, oh, 1 and a half hours, I need to be more careful. Okay, so 1 and 1 half hours equals 90 minutes. So I'm going to plug in 90 for x. So y equals, put the 0 here, 9 times 1 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18. 1,890 square feet. Okay, now if I do the 2 hours, remember 2 hours equals 120 minutes then I write y equals 2x, y equals 2 times 120, and therefore y equals 2 times 0 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2, 240 feet squared. Okay, uh, this was a parenthesis, not a 21. My fault. Okay, notice what just happened there. I paused because I got a smaller value for more time and it made no sense to me. And you always need to do that when you're working problems because if you're thinking about the problem and whether your answer is sensible sensible when you're done, makes sense, um, this one didn't. So I thought that was a one, but it was actually a parenthesis I've written twice. So two times zero is zero, two times nine is 18. Now I'm less with less time, obviously. So now it makes sense. So in 90 minutes or an hour and a half, 180 square feet. In two hours or 120 minutes, 240 square feet. Okay, number two. The figure below represents Nathan's constant rate of walking. So if he doesn't walk at all, he zero time, zero distance. Okay. The figure below represents his constant rate of walking. Oh, okay. A. Nicole just finished a five-minute walkathon. It took her 1.4 hours. Assume she walks at a constant rate. Let y represent the distance Nicole walked in x hours. Describe her walking at a constant rate as a linear equation in two variables. Okay, so remember that c equals y over x. I'll write that over here so you don't forget. c equals y over x. Your constant rate equals your distance over your time. And time is x and distance is y, so it's y over x, distance over time. Okay, so now that I know that, I take y over x, and I set up a proportion, and it says she can finish a 5-mile walkathon in 1.4 hours. So it's 5 over 1.4. When I cross-multiply these, I get y times 1.4, which is 1.4y, equals x times 5, or simply 5x. When I divide both sides by 1.4, okay, I get y equals 5 over 1.4x. Okay. I don't want a fraction down here. So if I multiply this by some value, like 10, then I would get rid of that decimal. We can't have a decimal in a fraction. So now I'm going to simplify that. So I'm going to multiply by 10. 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 1.4 is 14. They're both even. So 
actually let me just write it like this for now and put the x in there. Okay, so we're just getting rid of that decimal. I can't have a decimal in a fraction. And so then 50 is even and 14 is even. So if I divide those by 2, I get 25. And if I divide 14 by 2, I get 7. And 7 is prime and it won't go into 25. So that's reduced. Okay, so I could have just multiplied top and bottom by 5 as well and gotten rid of that fraction. But there it is. There's the equation. So then it says to describe Nicole's walking at a constant rate linear equation in two variables. So there, that's this. So what that means is it takes her seven hours to walk 25 miles. Okay, 25 sevenths x. Who walks at a greater speed? So if I go back here, well, I want to know what Nathan's rate is. What's his constant rate? Remember, rate is distance over time. So if I go up to my distance over to my time, so I'm starting at an integer and I'm going to the next integer, which is right here. This is the point 8 comma 2. So I rose 8 and I ran 2. So that's my slope. My slope is 8 over 2 or 4. Okay, so Nathan's C equals 4. And um, Nicole's C, so this is Nathan. And Nicole, C equals 25 7. So let's put this into a decimal to see, to compare. 7 times 3 is 21 with a remainder of 4. So it's 3 and 4 sevenths. So obviously now when we do that, we see that Nathan is walking at a faster rate, 4 miles per hour, and she's walking 3 and 4 sevenths miles per hour. So that answer is B. Number three, Susan can type four pages of text in 10 minutes. So her C equals 4 over 10. Okay, pages divided by time. Assuming she types at a constant rate, so there it is, Write a linear equation that represents this situation. Now remember, we want to set this equal to y over x. So if I just get rid of this c now, there's our proportion. We cross multiply, we get 10y equals 4x, and divide both sides by 10, and I get y equals 4 tenths x, or 4 over 10, or 2 over 5x. So I'll write both of those. Okay, hopefully you, I didn't lose you there. 4 tenths is 0.4. Um, but if we're going to graph these, I don't like using decimals because we're going to use this as the slope. So we'd go up 2 over 5. This does not tell us that. So I prefer this. Part B says, it, the table of values below represents the number of pages that Anne can type in Y, can type, can type pages she can type Y, in a, in a few selected X minutes. Assume she can type at a constant rate. So we're assuming there's a constant of rate. Who types faster? Okay, so now we're comparing Susan to Anne. So this is Susan's rate, two out of five, two pages per five minutes. So remember that C equals Y over X. And if I pick the first one, that's the easiest one, that is two over three. Okay, so there is her rate, two-thirds. So if Anne can type two pages in five minutes, and Anne can type two pages in three minutes, Anne is doing it, doing two pages two minutes quicker. So who types faster? Anne. Explain. I just said it. I'm not going to write it. She can type two pages in three minutes, where Susan can type two pages in five. Okay, number four. Phil can build three birdhouses in five days. So, three birdhouses in five days is birdhouses over time. Assuming he builds birdhouses at a constant rate, write the linear equation that represents a situation. So now I want to set that equal to y over x and ignore that c equals, okay, and cross multiply. But now I'm going to do this differently this time because cross multiplying is two steps. And if I want to get y by itself, all we have to do is multiply both sides by x, and this cancels, 
and I get y equals 3 fifths times x, or simply 3 over 5x. So there's my linear equation, three birdhouses in five minutes. There's my linear equation. B, the figure represents Carl's constant rate of building the same kind of birdhouses. Who builds a faster birdhouse? So now I have a constant rate. I have a straight line going through the origin. I just need to find that rate by looking for an integer point right on a corner of a grid right there. And in order to get there, I have to go up 3 and then to the right 1, 2, 3, 4. So Carl's is y equals 3 over 4 x. Now if I go back, Phil is 3 over 5 x. So Phil of y equals 3 over 5 x. So Phil can make three birdhouses in five hours, and Carl can make the same number of birdhouses in one hour less. So who's quicker? Carl. He can build three birdhouses in one hour less than Phil. So explain your general strategy for comparing proportional relationships. Okay, this was a little lengthy to write, so I just copied it and pasted. When comparing proportional relationships, we look specifically at the rate of change for each situation, and that is true. That is what we were comparing, the rate of change. The relationship with the greater rate of change will end up producing more, painting a greater area, or walking faster when compared to the same amount of time with other proportional relationship. So basically what they're saying is we compared our constant rates. Okay, that is the end of lesson 22. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.